about my money tv it's your boy king chaos back in the building man i got a special one here today y'all know i've been building a platform for a while and what i've been wanting to do for a long time was bring you guys true black men who matter not just black men but men women people who can show the youth of today that we can get money that we can follow our dreams in all sorts of different way today i guess stan smith the second trainer extraordinaire him and his best friend rocco won uh america's top dog was it 2019 2000 or 2020 was that covid well we didn't win but we had the you had the fastest time, the time. yeah fastest we had the fastest time. time on the obstacle course so we didn't fastest. win didn't but if win, we had but... some drug detection, we would have won that thing. But it, it was in 19, or not 1990, uh, 2019. <laughs> 2019, I think it dropped in 2020. That's why I had me off a little bit. But yeah. he had fastest time. And if you guys haven't seen it, uh, uh, that footage is out there on YouTube. Him and Rocco beat out canines from, I mean, you know, police canines. Uh, you just, just every kind of dog you can think about. Hold man. up. Hold up. If you made it this far, hit that subscribe bell. Make sure all your post notifications is on so you get all the dope content. Um, man's best friend went through that course like I've never seen before. He's also a training partner with one of the biggest growing platformers I've, I've seen, Fit Bully TV. I've get, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you guys know him from there. Ladies and gentlemen, Stan Smith, how are we doing today, man? Man, I can't complain, you know, working some dogs, getting some business stuff lined out. Processes, processes, processes. Process is processing, man. That that goes right into, like, my outline. I always like to know, like, where where did this all start for you? Where did, where did training dogs start for you? Did it just start with the love of the dogs, or did it start from something else? Well, I mean, kind of like Batman, it started from tragedy. So I had a, my first dog, he ran out the front door and ended up getting hit by a car. So the next dog I got, I wanted to do some training with, and it just so happened to be Rocco. And he was had the ability to do a lot of things, and it took us to, you know, America's Top Dog. So that's a long story short. You know, it, it all started from, you know, losing my first dog, and I knew I had to do more for the dogs. Yeah, uh, it, it's a, it amazes me, man. It, I don't right now right in my life i don't even own a dog and i watch all of you guys <laughs> stuff it, it, it's it's crazy um my my nephew owns a, a german shepherd and when he first got the puppy i said these guys you need to go watch these guys if you want to know how to take care of this dog just love your puppy and make sure that it's trained correctly you need to go subscribe to fit bully and you need to go subscribe to Iron Sharp K9 right now, so you can. I mean, he's 16 with a dog, and first thing that came to my mind was you need to subscribe to these two channels to know where you're going with that dog, man. So the the stuff you guys been doing has been amazing. How did you hook up with um, Fit Bully? How did that come about? So it was about uh, I think about three four years ago. He just sent me a DM on Instagram. Was like, hey. I like what you're doing with the dogs. Uh, I see you having a lot of fun. I want to come make a video for you. And I was like, all right, this is where we're going to be. Pull up. And he came out and we had a lot of other videographers hit us up and it would take, you know, months to get stuff. And then maybe we'd get a 30 second video and it wouldn't even be that good. But by the time we finished the training session that night, he left early and I had about four videos. I had pictures and I'm like, oh, this is a quick turnaround here. And it was the same time where I was kind of transitioning out of where I was just because I think we kind of outgrew, you know, let's just say that um, where we were originally. And I started hitting him up a little bit more and we've been kind of connecting ever since. Um, he's a lot more business oriented than myself. So he's helped okay. me get my business in line, um, you know, starting to plan all of those good things that are necessary for running a successful business. Yeah. You know what? What? um that's that's really what this this channel what i did wanted to dedicate this channel about you know showing the youth that um they can do something that they love and you know you know the old saying if you're doing something you love then you're not working it you know it's it's at that point you, you're doing what you love and you and you're getting paid for the love that you put into it so loving and take care of the dogs and him building out that plan i've never seen a channel grow 
as quick as the fit, fit, fit bully channel has grown uh TikTok, like it's a total movement man and i think a lot of the work that you do on there training the dogs is 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 amazing bro uh, i just i, I just got to give you your flowers for that um i appreciate it um my next question is did you get education in dog did you have a mentor how did you learn how to train the dog <laughs> So I kind of got thrown to the wolves. So I was training with a guy named Butch Capel when I first started. Um, I looked for some protection dog trainers in our area, and he popped up. And I went out there with my dog, and I just kind of fell in love with the work. You know, it reminded me a lot about sports, you know, competition. You got to practice when nobody's watching. You know, you got to do the reps. And then there was a decoy who was out there before me, and him and, you know, Butch had got into it, and that decoy stopped coming out. So we didn't have anybody to work the dogs. So he asked me, he was like, hey, you want to work the dogs? And I'm like, why not? Like, let's get into it. So, I mean, we got in exposed to it that way. And, you know, I just got put up in front of a lot of dogs that probably shouldn't have been doing bite work or shouldn't have been, you know, good and successful dogs in certain situations. And I just kind of picked up on it. You know, I would ask him questions here and there, and he would he would say certain things, but he wouldn't give me all of the information. And I just kind of had to figure it out on my own. Um, but it was getting in front of dogs that weren't supposed to do the things that we got these dogs to do. And then learning how to pay attention and like read when they're making mistakes and then how to put them in situations to be successful. So like Rocco, for instance, like all we did for the first two years of his life was literally just hang out, you know, and you hear us preach a lot about building a bond and a relationship with the dog. And when you do those things, these dogs will try anything for you. And that's where I really got into working with these dogs is the the bond and the relationship that I was missing from my sports because I tore my meniscus so I couldn't really compete anymore. And the dogs basically filled in and they were better than any teammate that we ever had because they're going to leave everything on the field for real. You know, yeah. coach always say give 110%. You know, you always slacked off a little bit. But <laughs> when you say a dog's going to give 110%, you know that dog is giving everything he has because he has a choice to do what we want them to do versus what they want to do. If I send Rocco on top of a car, he could choose to go chase a cat. But if he want to go do what I want him to do, he has to jump on that car, go get that man, entertain that, engage, and then come back all on command when he has a choice to do whatever. So that all comes with the relationship that you build with your dog. So so the first step to really training a dog correctly to you would be just first off creating that bond with the dog. Yeah, definitely. So in a board and train, the first four or five days, I just kind of hang out with the dog. Like we'll go through some stuff. And then, yeah, there's going to be dogs that you get day one that want to engage and do everything that you want. And then there's some dogs. I got this German Shepherd or not a German Shepherd, a German short hair pointer right now. And he's been here for 20 days and he still don't really care about me. So it's building that bond. <laughs> and it's just, man, it's been so frustrating because it's usually a lot quicker process. But when you get these older dogs, they have their ingrained behaviors and they have things that they already want to do. And you got to work, you know, behind the curve uh, to get that relationship up. And there's glimpses of like, oh, I like you. But then he's like, oh, I'm going to go back to my default behavior. But still, you try to build that bond in the relationship with the dog because a lot of these dogs aren't going to work for you. They're going to work with you. And especially if you get into like the Rottweilers and the Mastiffs, those big, powerful dogs like I got a dog right now. His name's Grenade. If he don't want to do something, he's going to look at you and be like, hey, what's good? <laughs> <laughs> like, are we are we working together or are you trying to make me work for you? And it's like, all right, Playboy, like I got you. Like, we'll work together on this one. So. Yeah, that relationship is going to be the most important thing that you can get with your dog. And I suggest everybody, you know, spend time with your dog, not just in training, like hang out with your dog, go on rides, hang out, throw some ball. You know, even if you, you know, drink some whiskey, drink some whiskey with your dog, do these things, letting that dog know that they are a valuable asset to your life. Yeah, that's dope, man. Um, I, when I when I watch your videos, when I watch the content on any on any of the channels, it's it's so consistent that it's about taking care of your animal and just loving the dog, man. And uh, I, I kind of wanted you to kind of expound on it because I know you you know when you when you get a new dog and you look at what do you look for in a dog that, for instance, if you want to want them to do bite work or, um, you know, what's the what's the process? What do you look for in a dog? that's going to do some work like that. 
Uh, so confidence is going to be the first thing that we look for. So like, are they spooked by loud noises? Are they spooked by shadows? Like if I put a pool, you know, a little plastic pool in the middle of a room, is the dog going to be afraid to go approach it? I'm looking at confidence at the very beginning because Again, when you're getting these dogs to do bite work, yeah, it starts off, you know, fun and hunky dory, but then it gets to the point where I'm gonna send you in a room that's pitch black and somebody's gonna be trying to do some some stuff to you and you gotta continue <laughs> to do what you need to do. So confidence is gonna be the most important thing that I look for. Um, then the next is gonna be athletic ability. Um, I don't want a dog, me personally, I don't like bigger dogs because they limit of the athletic ability that they can do. So 150 pound dogs going to have a problem jumping on a Tahoe. If somebody jumps up there to get away, you know, Rocco at 55, 60 pounds max, he jumping up there with you. And a lot of people were like, Oh, if a dog's chasing me, I'm going to jump on a car. I'm like, okay, cool. And then what you're going to jump yeah, off. Right, right. He's still going to be chasing you. So, <laughs> you know, I look for that athletic ability and then I look for the want to, you know, you can get these dogs that, you know, are really badass, but they really don't want to work for their handler. And that dog would choose to be like, eh, I really, really don't feel like it. And if you get in an oh shit situation, you don't want your dog thinking, eh, I kind of want to do it. Nah, you want that dog going straightforward because that's going to be the difference between life or death when you get in those situations. And ideally, you know, I pray, hopefully we never have to use any of the training that we do, but if we do, I want my dog to know exactly what they need to do. Yeah, that makes makes good sense. So kind of going backwards, I, I know you said you kind of got thrown into the fire. So most of the stuff you learned was on the job, working with the dogs. It, it wasn't like a situation where uh, I go somewhere and someone teaches me how to do it. Like you, you just really learned this on the go. Yeah, I mean, working the dog, I mean, and that's experience is the best teacher. You know, I've been bit a lot of times. I've been bit on literally every part of my body from my feet up to my forehead and every part in between, literally. No <laughs> exaggerations on that. Um, but it's making those mistakes. And, you know, those mistakes make you aware to certain things. And it's learning to really trust your judgment. Because, honestly, every time I've gotten bit, it's been like, man, I'm about to get bit. But then I'm like, nah, let me let me just see what happens. And I always end up getting bit. So nowadays, if I have that feeling, I'm like, nah, go put that dog up. Or I don't even go around that dog just because, I mean, it's not worth it at the end of the day. I've took my 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 bites. I got my blood. I've seen it enough times. I know it's still there. So I'm yeah. not trying to see no more blood, man. You got to go with your first mind. I always correlate that. And, and if you're listening, you know what he's saying basically is like experience is always going to be the best teacher. You can go out and get all the education you want, but until you in the situations actually putting that those theories to work. I mean, I'm a, I'm a really big person on reading. Um, and, uh, I, I was really big in retail. I did, I did, I, I worked for some of the biggest retail companies and, all my experience was on the job. I never, I never went to college. You know, I started working at, at 15 years old. You know what I mean? So it, it was a situation where I worked my way up in the corporate world or the retail end of the corporate world with just experience. And I, and I've sat back and watched people come in who have four year degrees and they look at me and like, Oh, well, I'm, this is how it goes. And I'm like, you're not gonna be here for long, buddy. That's that's not how it goes. I, I have practical application of that. So even if you don't have um, you know, the the proper education, don't get discouraged, just just keep working um and find you know, find those opportunities for yourself out there. Um you said um something that I thought was uh, was pretty dope, and um is that you're getting help from Trevor with your business end of it. How did you, did, I know you had Iron Sharp Canine before you met him. So how, how is he helping you grow your business? Well, so actually when I initially met him, I was still, I was still at Butch's place. So I didn't even have my own business. Um, and, you know, we started seeing, let's say we didn't see eye to eye on a lot of things. And I just made the decision that it'd probably be better that I'm not there anymore before, you know, it goes even more left. 
And, you know, when I started talking to Trev, he was like, because I would always say iron sharpens iron. You know, I got Proverbs, uh, what is it, 27, 23, 17, you mm -hmm. know, uh, tatted on me. So, like, I believe iron sharpens iron is my, you know, thing, you know. And if you're not around people that are trying to sharpen you, you're really just getting dull. And he was like, well, just call your business iron sharp canine. And I was like, huh, that makes sense. So we looked into it. It was available. So we, you know, started the process, got the LLCs, got the different stuff. So, I mean, since honestly, since I met him, he's always been like pushing that business side of things. He uh, he came out and was like, well, when do people show up? We're like, well, they'll get here at five. He's like, well, what are y'all going to do till five? I was like, shit, just really hang out until because I didn't have a lot of downtime back then. So I enjoyed the times where nobody was out there. But at the same time, you know, we got to make sure the business is running because when we're not there, you still want stuff to be happening and that's kind of where i'm getting into now like i'm for the for the most part a one-man operation and i'm getting some other people in helping me get some business stuff i need to get some other trainers here so like when we do have events and we got to go get content like you know the dogs are still getting worked you know stuff still getting done even though that i'm not physically here and that was one thing that i had to do is really get out of my own way because i was like so I guess believed in my sauce so much where it was like people are coming to me to train with me. So I can't hire somebody else who isn't me because that's not going to work. But you should be able to like replicate yourself. So if my processes are so good and if I'm such a good handler or trainer, like I should be able to teach somebody else to be, you know, they don't have to be me, but they can be the best version of them. And that should be even better than, you know, the average person. So that's where I'm getting into now, getting everything like the step by step guides, you know, trying to put everything out. So it just makes sense. Um, the organization of how you should train, what you need to train and then the importance of, you know, when you need to correct, when you don't need to correct. It's just putting all of that on paper for somebody else to understand, especially that people that maybe don't have the athletic experience that, you know, because I pick up a lot of stuff with the dogs because of sports. So, right. you know, you learn different moves and techniques because the defender does X, Y, and Z. So, like, I can see what a dog's about to do, and I'm correcting it before it even happens. And learning how to explain that to people has been a process in itself. So, the the outlining everything, I mean, it's honestly been a struggle, but it's been very beneficial because it makes my processes that I'm even doing with the dogs a whole lot simpler. Yeah, streamlines your process. I think a lot of people um get in their own way when they start a business because that business is in your mind, it's in your head, and you can see it and you can do the work. But the the best thing is like is is like you said, replicating yourself, trying to download the 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 most information in the person that you're working with in order to, like you said, if you're not there, that that same caliber of work is being done. A lot of people um you know, and I always try to equate uh, whatever business that we're talking about to like regular business world. You know, like if I'm running a, a, a department store when I'm not there, I want my assistant to be be able to do everything that I, I do. A one. So that way, when I'm not there, I know everything that's getting done and it's getting done in a, in a proper way. So that's that's key. Um, streamlining the business and just. And even to piggyback on what you were saying about, you know, your career in the, the business industry where you didn't have the, the education background and people will look at you a certain way. Like I actually had to get over that as well, because, you know, all these people go to decoy camps or go to this seminar and this seminar. And I'm like, I ain't been to none of that. But I mean, we get to the <laughs> same place just because I don't do it the way that you're doing it or the way that you're saying it doesn't mean I'm wrong. And like that shit used to bother me when I was, you know, inexperienced in the game and still trying to figure out where I fit in. And once I got to the point where it's like, man, I have my own lane. Like, I don't have to do it how you guys do it. Like, there's going to be times where, yeah, your techniques are going to work. And there's going to be times that your techniques aren't going to work. And it's just like in the military, the the generals and the, the people that are higher ups that have actually gone through the ranks and learned everything, they get a whole lot more respect than somebody coming out of college with that same degree, but they just been appointed to that position because they have the degree. And like you said, they have stuff on paper, but it's like, Hey, in war, 
uh, that paper shit may not work. When you, you can't pull the paper dogs, out and work. That ABC may not work. You may have to go to Z. You may have to get mix up that alphabet a little bit to get the same results. So, I mean, that was one of the biggest things that I had to get out of my own way because I used to get in my head a lot and be like, well, this isn't the way this person does it or this isn't the way that. And then at the end of the day, it's like, I mean, my dogs can do damn near everything that y'all can. And I don't even have to use the same tools and I don't have to go the same route that you guys did. And my dogs look like they're having more fun. So, I mean, who's really winning? Yeah, yeah, yeah you're absolutely right. I, I, it's good that, the, that we're having this dialogue and, you know, young guys can get this information because I feel like that's, that's a big fear. I always tell young men that I go into any situation, job, uh, work, play, I want to be the best at what I'm doing and whatever, whatever way I need to do, whatever skill it is that I need to acquire to be the best at what I'm doing. I don't want to go, even if I'm at McDonald's, man, I want to be the best dude in the drive through. I want to be getting the cars through the fastest and that's mm -hmm. the mentality and that's the people that I want to bring to my channel. So everybody, you know, can kind of get that, that mad dog mentality. It's like, it's like, it's like basketball. Like you said, like sports, like you don't want to, you don't want to get out there and be, uh, the 15th man on a bench you want to get out there and be jordan you know what get, i mean business <laughs> it should be the same way you know what i mean but but at the same time you can't go in with your ego be thinking you know everything because there's going to be something that somebody's going to tell you and i mean we've we've been blessed to be a lot around a lot of dog men like like old school like don't give a fuck about social media politics none of that they just this is the way that stuff is done and you like you look at what they're saying it's like man that's a little harsh sometimes but it's like Hey, there's some times where it's got to be exactly that way. And then you learn how to adapt and you learn how to make it, you know, a little bit more um, inclusive for the, you know, the regular John Doe's of the, the dog world and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's you have to be willing to learn, take criticism and like not get in your feelings when somebody's telling you you're doing something wrong. Because, I mean, there's some posts that we've posted and I knew the dog wasn't perfect and somebody comments on it and it's like, yeah, you're trying to make me feel bad about it, but you're right. So, okay, cool. I need to focus a little bit more on that. Then the next video we post, the dog ain't doing that, but nobody says, hey, good job. You actually worked on it. They just, they don't say nothing. Yeah. And it's like, once you get to the point where the, the applause don't matter and the criticism doesn't matter and you just really are making the dog better and the people who actually matter, they're benefiting from it. It's a whole lot more peaceful, my man. Yeah, you know, it's like a you just piggybacking off of that, you know, the the best the best bosses, the Steve Jobs, the 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 Elon Musk, their quality is what they understand is hiring somebody to do the work that they can't do. Or, you know, the best boss don't don't know everything, but they acquire or bring the people around them that know the stuff so they can so they can learn themselves. I think that's something that Trevor does really well um, is creating a, a team where he's weak at you strong at and that, and that can that becomes a force. And a lot of people get in their own way with that, not not understanding that delegating task is just as as important as you getting the job done yourself because that's how it gets done when you're not there you know what i mean and and that's that's literally where i'm at right now learning how to delegate and communicate to people about certain things that they're needing to get done or they need to work on um so things can keep moving forward and you know i, I don't know organization planning <laughs> that's not my strong suit like i'm more <laughs> abstract this way this way this way but you know, for some certain people, that one, two, three, four, five, you know, step methods are going to be more beneficial. So I got some folks around now that are helping me outline all of these things and then put the processes down. And then they even ask questions where it's like, I'm thinking I'm explaining it simply, but it's like, no, you're still yeah. missing step one through five because I do one through five without thinking about it anymore. But there's going to be somebody who's never been around dogs that don't understand how to the proper way to greet a dog or the proper way to put on a slip lead or anything like that. And you're just like, you know, sometimes the it's not common sense because honestly, there's not really a lot of information out in the dog world. A lot of people want to keep everything, you know, and gatekeep and make sure that you have to come to them for every piece of information to make yourself feel important. And it's like me, I'm like, I'm going to tell you everything that I know. If you're going to use it, you're going to use it. If you're not, that's cool. But I'm practicing myself of how to communicate these things to, you know, 
basically a 12 year old. And if you can communicate what you're doing to somebody who's young in age, you actually understand what you're doing. And a lot of dog trainers, I think they talk over people because they really don't know what they're talking about. And then they have to feel important in this instance where the people have to keep coming back and their dogs really aren't even making progress. But the bar is so low on dog training. Even if the dog's not making progress, the dog is getting a little bit better than it was before. So these people can bullshit everybody out there and there's a lot of you know the big name people that have marketing and doing all this stuff and then you really look at the dogs and you're like you got one dog that's doing that why don't you if you're the best like why don't you have thousands of dogs like what's the dude name from um i think he's overseas like nino something with st k9 or whatever oh, like, yeah oh, yeah he, yeah he, that dude is dialed in he's replicated that to the point where everybody want to train like him and yeah. he's figured it out but he spent the time in there he spent the effort he spent exactly what you need to do and he's able to replicate that so i mean i shout out to dude i mean he's he's cold with it but i mean he's also been doing this shit for damn near 40 years yeah so it's like you've had that amount of time to figure it out and a lot of people don't want to put in the time to figure it out everybody wants to get a leash and call himself a dog trainer everybody wants to go to one <laughs> decoy camp and now they're the best decoy in the world and it's like yeah you can work a finished dog but can you actually build a dog and can you build a dog who wasn't supposed to do it um, we had a guy come up this weekend. His name's Gerald. He deals with Dobermans. He's out on the West Coast, and he's used to Dobermans, Roddies, Mouse, all those kind of dogs that are supposed to do bite work. So we pulled out an Aussie. You know, I got Boot. So we pulled out Boot, and you can tell he had a look on his face. He was like, what the fuck is about to happen? Like, ain't no way. And we got Boot dialed in. He's doing what he need to do. And he literally on camera, he goes, Wow. Like I would have never, I think he called him a granola, a granola yogurt dog or something. <laughs> like, I would have never expected that dog to do what he did. And, you know, I take, I, I love that because people underestimate that dog a lot. And it's like, cool. If you underestimate him, that's going to look bad on you because he's going to do everything that he needs to do. Is he going to be a Malinois? No, I don't need him to be a Malinois. All I need him is to do exactly what I'm asking him to do. And he's going to do that. Um, with with i did some i did a you know i i love to do research dog training right now they said i, I think last was 2021 they said it was a 3.8 billion dollar industry with that being said what is stan's goal with iron sharp k9 where where are you looking to build your business and where are you looking to go with iron sharp k9 uh, we'll definitely get some more trainers out here so we can impact more dogs. You know, me in a month by myself, I can probably do 10 dogs, you know, and that's, you know, stretching it kind of thin. But if I get two to three more trainers, now we can really impact a lot more dogs. We can put out a lot more content. We can put out a lot more education. And I think that's what the dog game is missing is the education side behind it. So we want to get more into like the online courses, the online programs, basically teaching you how to live better with your dog um, and not necessarily from just like a super competition standpoint. Like you got to make sure you're reaching the general pet owners because there's so many people that are going to compete. Yeah, that's cool. Right. right. But most people get a dog to be a companion. And that means a dog that is going to come when called a dog that's going to lay over there and do nothing and a dog you can have a little bit of fun with. So that's where I'm going to start primarily focusing like my educational part on is how to get your dog to do those things. And if you do want to go to the higher level, just making sure people understand that it is work. And even though that you put in six, eight, a year worth of work, that don't mean it's over. Like boot is two years old and there's still stuff I got to work on with him. And I've worked with him every day, probably missed five days in his two years of life just because I've been traveling. I didn't have him with me, but every day you got to be doing something with your dog. And if you really want that creme de la creme, you got to put in the work and everybody thinks that you can just send your dog off to somebody and they're going to come back a program robot. That's not how they work. The reason why my dogs do what they want is because they understand that I enjoy when they do these things. And also, if they're messing up, they know that there's going to be some type of consequence. And that means, you know, they may get a, a correction here. They may not go on, a, on an experience with us. They may not get their ball. They may miss a meal. But they understand that there's a line that they can cross and a line that they can't. But at the same time, I understand when I'm correcting the dog, they know why they're being corrected. Absolutely. So your goal is to basically help 
pet home owners and, and get them to uh, understand of where they can, you know, get the dogs to do the, the basic things like the recall. So somebody doesn't go through that tragedy that you went through in the beginning. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's, that's the baseline. And then up to the point where if you want a, a personal protection dog, we're going to show you how to get that too. And you want a dog that can go any and everywhere because if your dog doesn't like everybody or you can't have this dog around other dogs or other people or whatever, like that's not a very good personal protection dog because it becomes more of a liability than an asset. So I want everybody to understand like you have to put in the work to get the dog that you want and they just don't come genetically bred for it. Even though they have all of the attributes, you still have to put in the work. Absolutely. And I think that's important for, you know, people who are, you know, looking to train their dogs to just, you know, take in some of this information. Um, we got stand up here today just to kind of give you, give you guys a baseline. I, I just, when I seen Stan for the first time, I did the research. I went back and watched him and Rocco run the course. I mean, it was really inspirational to me to see what was going on. If if you're not a fan, you may not know, but I got, I got to go into my fan this now and, What's going on with, with, with Hero, man? What's going on with your new... What's, what's going on with the pup, man? Hey, I mean, it's funny. We just did a, some videos with Hero today, actually. Oh, that's um, dope. That's dope. Yeah, no, nah, I mean, he was, a, he was a happy accident. Um, You know, Amir got in the heat last year. Rocco actually chewed the crate, broke her out, and did what he needed to do at nine years old. I I tried to breed him a couple years before that. He It didn't work, so I'm like, oh, he may be shooting blanks. So I never even tried again because I'm like, I don't want to get disappointed, right? Right. And he he took upon his own accord to uh, reproduce. And, you know, that's where we got Hero. And with the, the bullies, he's, you know, he has obviously 50% bully because Mira's that. They right. take a little bit longer to mature. And I honestly wasn't wanting another puppy at the time because I had Boot and I was focusing a lot on him. And it took a lot of work to get him to bite and hold and to do some different things because, again, that's going against genetics. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of put Hero on the back burner and just really let him be like a cocky donkey right now. So, like, he's <laughs> he, he going to jump on some furniture. He going to pull on a leash. He going to jump on people. He going to do all of those things. But I wanted his confidence to be so high because with the bullies, if you're too hard on them too early you can break them and you can shut them down so now we've really been dialing them in a little bit more we actually did the recall course with jamarcus he shot that uh for us and we used hero and he did really good with that and then even looking at him like pulling on the leash and stuff i'm like man your shoulders look good your back end look good and even today we had him on the the wall climb and if he didn't get distracted by the cat he would have got nine foot and I'm like, this is only your third time on the wall. So, like, if we can really teach you how to climb and do some things, like, bro, you can be very impressive. So I am going to start spending a little bit more time with Hero. We are going to start dialing him in a little bit more so we can do, you know, have some more fun with him. Um, but he just was kind of on the back burner for a little while because we had to put more more time in Boot. And Boot's kind of the the premier demo dog that I have because he's visually appealing. Um, he's good with dogs. He's good with kids. I can take him everywhere. He's small enough to fit under an airplane seat. So, you know, when we travel, he don't take up a lot of space and he's just a really easy dog to deal with. So I put more time into that um, than I did with hero, but I do definitely need to put more time into hero to get him to basically not, he's never going to, he's never going to be Rocco. You know, I'm right. never, you know, going to hold that uh, title in front of him or anything or try to compare that because that just wouldn't be fair because Rocco's an anomaly, but I'm just going to try to make Hero the best dog that he can be. And it's just going to be a fun process to to see him grow from where he is right now to, you know, by the time he's two, three years old, I mean, I think Hero will be, you know, just as impressive, if not more impressive than Rocco, just because I'm going to be better than I was when Rocco was in his prime. Absolutely. Um, you and that that was great. What I what you said that I kind of caught on to was my question would be when is a good time to start training a dog? I know um that you just don't want to like you say just instantly it's a puppy get on and start training training a dog and making a dog you know you know taking the dog's confidence away too early. So when is a good time to start training a dog? Uh, I mean, so the earlier you start, the more you can do with the dog. So I got boot at seven weeks old and I really started training him, quote unquote, 
the moment I got them. But it wasn't like I was correcting a lot of stuff. It was a lot of luring, teaching them how to move, you know, building the confidence, you know. So we got him in the pools with the bottles, you know. We got him getting on obstacles. I just wanted him to know that if I'm asking him to do something, that there's going to be a benefit from it. So there was a lot of food luring and stuff like that at the very beginning. So he realized that, that there was value in me. Um, so the earlier you start with the dogs, the better, but you also don't want to put corrections on a dog too early. So I think that's more of the question you're asking is when you can start correcting a dog, I would start correcting the dog after they've gone through probably puberty. And that's usually between, you know, depending on the big, your size of the dog, anywhere between six and about 14 months. Right. So in that time frame, that's when you're going to start adding a little bit more corrections and expecting a little bit more from the dog. But before before seven months, I mean, let your puppy be a puppy, man. Anything you're going to do with the dog, make sure you have something for them, luring them around, making sure every experience that you guys have is pleasant and you're not teaching the dog that they can't be a dog. And a lot of people put a lot of control on these dogs um, you know, there's a litter of German Shepherds that we've been working with for the last year. And there's there's some dogs in the litter that are just super obnoxious and hit the end of the leash and don't care about nothing. And then there's some dogs on the other side that people put more control on it because they didn't want the dog to be obnoxious. And now that dog hits the end of the leash and think it's doing something wrong where what we want them to do is hit the end of the leash and try to pull you to that decoy. So it's like, you have to really understand what you're doing with these dogs and what goals you're trying to get, because you're going to raise those dogs differently. So a dog that's going to be more of a pet home. Yeah. You probably want to correct all of those things and don't want them to have too much obnoxiousness and you don't want them to have a lot of independence. You want them to look into you for guidance. But if I'm getting a dog that when I want it to be three, five years old to go in a building that's pitch black and go find a bad guy because they broke into my house and turned off the lights. I don't want that dog looking for me for guidance. I want that dog to have enough confidence and independence where they're like, you told me to go find somebody and bite them. That's what I'm going to go do. And I don't need you to tell me again. I don't need no more approval. You gave me the green light and that's where we're going to take. So making sure that you know what you are wanting your dog to do in the future depends on how much corrections or how much uh, interference you are going to, you know, provide for the dog early on. Me personally, I want a cocky dog that can go and do anything, jump on anything and believe in themselves that if they if they have to jump over an eight foot fence, they're going to try. And if they try, if you get to seven foot, I'm going to push your ass over that last foot because I got your back. <laughs> like that, you know, that's that's dope. What what? So if I'm if I'm just a, I don't I've never had a dog, but I'm looking for a dog and I have an active lifestyle or. I'm not an active lifestyle person. I just want to, you know, a companion dog. How do you pick the kind of dog? Like, like you say, you got boots. Boots wouldn't be a dog that everybody would think it does the bite work that, that he does. I, I'm, of course he would be a high energy dog just because of what kind of dog he is, but bite work. Like he said, people don't believe he does it. I've seen him swim. I've seen him do all kinds of amazing stuff that you, you, you haven't seen in a, a dog of his kind. But what would I be looking for if I was just a, a regular Joe? I don't know. And how do I pick the best pet for me? I mean, like you said, it depends. If you if you want to be active, I mean, you're going to get some type of working dog. And the thing that – so I don't know if you ever heard of a guy named John K9. He has a border collie named Maker. And still to this day, the best trained dog I've ever seen. That dog got like 100 commands. He can go tell you to fake – he can tell his dog to fake pee on you, and his dog's going to hike his leg like he's pissing on you, and he doesn't. So <laughs> that dog is trained, boy. And um, he was also, he's a border collie. So he was the dog that basically got me inspired to get boot. So they were bred to herd. So they had a job. They use their mouth a lot, but they're not biting and holding. So I had to teach boot to bite and hold. So that was just a little complication. But you want to get a dog that has some potential for what you're looking for. And if you're not super active, don't get a dog that needs two, three hours worth of exercise to be calm you know if you're a first-time dog owner man start with a little dog there ain't nothing wrong with a little dog but again there's some little dogs that are still you know gangsters don't get yeah. a jack russell don't get a a, a jagged terrier don't get these dogs that still need a job 
you know, start with something simple. Um, you know, and even if you're just not trying to really do anything like sport wise or competition or anything, man, check out a rescue, like find a dog that is a little docile, but again, do some research on, on the breeds because all of those things matter. Um, but know what you're getting into before you get the dog. A lot of people will see the movies that come out, uh, you know, John Wick, what's the movie Max? They have these Malinois and then everybody wanted a Mal. And it's like, do you really know what a Mal is used for? A right. Mal is used for war. A Mal is used for police officers. Because when they push that button on that door, they don't need a dog that's going to be like... I kind of want to do it today. No, they need a dog that is amped up 100% of the time and going to go and go and go and go until they can't go no more. And Every that's time. what they're, uh, you know, bred for. If you don't have that lifestyle, don't get a mountain wall. Don't get a working German, uh, German Shepherd. Don't do those things because they're going to be a headache. Because the thing is, people realize, don't realize, like, if you get a dog, a mountain wall, a game bred pit, you can put them on the treadmill for, for 30 minutes, right? And they get tired at 30 minutes. So the next day, you know what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to go to 32 minutes. And then the next day, you're going to have to go to 36 minutes. And then you just have to in keep increasing, and the dog keeps getting more and more conditioned to the point where that some bitch is going to run for two hours and then be get off and be like, hey, what are we doing next? Right. And if you don't have the, the ability and you don't have the time for that, don't get those kind of dogs because you're doing a disservice to the dog and yourself. And those dogs will tear up your couch. They'll chew through your walls. They will do whatever it is to get that energy out. So if you are not an active person, do not get a dog that needs to be active. And there are dogs that are built for that. You know, your Mastiffs, your Great Danes, the bigger dogs, they still have a little bit of drive. They want to do some stuff, but they don't need two, three hours. You know? Right. And at the same time, if you are a active person, don't get these 120 pound, 130 pound dogs that can only walk half a mile and then they about to die. <laughs> so that's one reason why I don't get a big dog, because I want a dog that I can go. If I need to go run a 5K, hey, we're about to go run a 5K. If, if we need to go do something after that, I still need you to be 100 percent active. So I need a dog that can keep going and going and going and going. But I also want to have a dog that has a little bit of an off switch. And Boots kind of been the best of both worlds in that instance because he does chill. You know, he has his calm moments. But when we need to go, he ready to go. And he gets to the point where he kind of goes red. And that's what we're kind of working on him uh, understanding his his lines a little bit more. <laughs> because once he goes red, he's not thinking anymore. He's just reacting. And it's like, no, look, I always need you to be clear-headed and thinking about what's going on. So, I mean... Boot has definitely been a fun process. He's different than any dog that I've really worked with because he is a softer dog, but at the same time, he's very hard-headed and he's stubborn in what he wants to do. So it's been fun finding the balance between, like, you know, being a little hard on him and allowing him to do kind of what he wants to do. So, Very intelligent dog, man. I, I, I it's, it's just dope to watch the the – the progression, um, a lot of the uh, content that you guys put out across all the channels, and I, I haven't said better best dog, and I just want I want to go ahead and shout, shout him out too because yeah. you know you guys are a team, and I and I I really think that people even if you don't have dogs, man, go make sure that you you're subscribing to Iron Shop K9, make sure you're subscribing to Fit Bully TV, make sure you're subscribed to Better Best Dog. These guys are really get putting in the work and really loving the dogs and showing you guys how to love and take care of your dog. I want, I want to get into something fun. I'm not going to keep you here. You, you know, you get, you, you gave me 45 minutes to, to an hour and I really appreciate your time. And it's been dope for me. I want to ask you some kind of fun though. What's, what's it been like for Stan to start having fans of his own or being recognized when you go out? <laughs> what's it been like for Stan going through this process? Man, for lack of better words, it should have been weird. <laughs> it, it has been weird. Uh, when we moved out to the place we're at right now, um, this guy was cutting my grass, and he was like, oh, no way. I seen your video on TikTok. And I'm like, what video are you talking about? He's like, the one with the bullies. And it was a video that we had with Chief, you know, before, you know, Ego and them. Wow. And it was a video that we had go viral. And I'm like, man, this is crazy. And... 
you know, just getting to the point where, you know, people are coming up, you know, grown men are be like, hey, bro, you know, I appreciate what you're doing. I'm looking up to you. And I'm like, bro, you're like 40. Like, this is weird. So it's been um, it's been an experience, you know, to say, you know, getting recognized and, you know, people giving us accolades and things like that. Because one, I never got into the dog world for any of that. I right. just got into the dog world because I didn't want my dog to die. And I think a lot of people get into, you know, this world because they want those accolades and they want the appreciation. And I never wanted it, but we get it. So it's still, I'm still adjusting to it and still finding my lane and all of those things. But at the end of the day, like you said, we're putting in the work and people are seeing what it is and we're inspiring people to even try to do more. And that's been probably the best part about all of this is, again, iron sharpens iron. And if I want somebody to be sharp from what I'm doing, I got to be sharp in what I'm doing. So I got to be iron in that equation. So it's been it's been interesting getting used to, uh, <laughs> but it's more and more comfortable. And I mean, like you had talked about earlier, you know, you want to be somebody that inspires the youth and ultimately I just wanted to be somebody that my daughters could look up to and be like, Hey, I'm proud that he's my dad. And even my, my middle child, she's seven, seven. I got six or seven and a 14. And she was like, Hey, my friend saw you on uh, YouTube and was like, Hey, is your dad's name this? And she's like, yeah, he trains dogs. She's like, yeah. And like, <laughs> they're proud of these things, you know? Yeah, and it's man. like, all we're doing at the end of the day is playing with my dog, but we're inspiring people to even go out and spend more time with their dogs. You know, my kids look up to those things, but just keep not getting, you know, trapped in your own sauce, believing in your own bullshit, you know, continue that you got more work to do, continue that, you know, you got to be more than what we are right now. So it's, it's been fun, but we obviously got more work to do because, you know, more people should be recognizing us for what we're doing. And, you know, like you said, Trevor, We'll go out to different places with him, and I've been with him in Atlanta. We've been in Vegas, and people are literally stopping him, walking on the street, yelling out, hey, take care of your dogs. And I'm like, okay, cool. So (laughs) as much as we've done, you know, I've done personally, like, I obviously have more to do because I'm not recognized like that. And that's one thing that Trevor's always telling us. He's like, hey, you got to do more. You got to be better. You got to be better. You got to do this. And it's like, okay, cool. Because he's not asking us to do anything that he hasn't done. And the proof is in the pudding. Because, again, we go out of town. We was in the club in Atlanta. And it was dark. I couldn't even see him next to me. And these, it ain't no small guys coming up to him talking about, hey, bro, take care of your dog. And yeah. like you know, you you see you see somebody six seven walking up on you in the club at one o'clock in the morning. You like, oh shit, we finna get into. But then they dap you up, shake your hand, want to take a photo with you. They're on the phone with their girl talking about, oh shit, da 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 da. It's like, yeah. okay, cool. We got we got more work to do. And I mean, that's I think the best part about it is because I mean, there's no finish line with this is you can do X, Y and Z, but there's always more that you can do and inspire more people to be even better because what there's eight billion people in this world. So there's always somebody that you can impact, man. You guys are you guys are not just inspiring people to um, take care of their dogs like you just said, man, um, your father, you know, what I'm saying I like. The shirt I got on today says Black Man Matter and what you talked about with your daughters and what you talked about with just, you know, um, being with Trevor and, you know, feeling weird about the situation. I got a quote from KRS-One and he said, you always want elders to speak to the youth and youth to speak to the elders, because once you go around your say, um, say um, I'm say I'm I'm older than you, we have a conversation. You can put me up on something that I that when I go around my friend group or my age group that they may not be aware of. And I can do the same thing for you. So that's why the dialogue between age groups is, is so, so important to me. I think not only that, you know, us being fathers and trying to put out the, the right representation of what you should be doing, period, man. Taking care of your dog is just a tagline, but it means so much more because you, we, we're talking about health. You, you know, you guys talk about health. You talk about health and yourself, hitting the gym, taking care of your own self, building a business and building a legacy for your family. So it's it's way bigger than dogs, man. I, I just want you, you guys to know that, man. I really appreciate you um, stopping past the platform today. Uh, what I want to do, I'm going to give you the ISO. 
give them all your you know uh, your facebook your instagram give them everything man and, and give give the young people something to uh go on before you get out of here <laughs> all right man so uh basically it's iron sharp k9 on all platforms tiktok youtube instagram on facebook it's stan smith i gotta uh forget which picture it is i think it's a picture of me and boot right now and i mean if you're growing up find something you enjoy don't be afraid to put all your eggs in one basket you have to believe in yourself because if you don't believe in yourself nobody else is and you have to be okay with getting out of your own way that's one of the best advice that i ever got because i would always hesitate i was always doubt i would always overthink certain situations when you know the proof is in the pudding when you're putting in the work it's going to come out eventually and making sure when nobody's watching you're still doing what you need to do to be better all right thank you man stan the dog man with iron sharp k9 man fit bully tv better best dogs man go subscribe to all these guys channel i appreciate you being here for us today man much success to everything you guys got going on man hopefully we can do this again in the future and you're and you're 10 times bigger than you are today man i appreciate it that's a bit, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, we got to get we got to get Jamil to talk about his story, how he overcame being afraid of dogs and got into what he's doing now. So that is a very interesting story about overcoming fears and just again believing in the people you got around you. Yeah, I want to. I, I, I want to. You know, I actually what happened was I was watching the content and um, Trevor was like, "We you want to kind of." you know, start working with other YouTubers. And that was really something big that I was looking to do. So I jumped right in your inbox. You got right back to me. So if you guys are watching this and you want, you know, you want to have Stan on your show, you want to, you know, you want to get with Stan. I hit him on Instagram. He's answering his Instagram. I, I haven't hit Trevor in his Instagram because he always says he's not reading that shit. And I believe him <laughs> wholeheartedly. But maybe one day I can get Stan on here because I believe it's important. Yeah. Like I said, man, he is a leader, and I, I think people need to see that representation. Just because someone says something, I don't let things rub me the wrong way. I try to, I try to learn from every situation. I try to learn. No matter, I, I come from the era where the coaches were hard on you, where people were hard on you. So the way it comes out doesn't matter to me, so long as I can take something from it. You know what I mean? So. Thanks. I really appreciate you guys, man. Hopefully I can get a couple more of you guys up here. We can do this more so we can spread this information, you know, throughout YouTube and throughout the world, man. Take care of your dog. Take care of the people around you. And then we just make it a better world for everybody. You know what I mean? Hey, sounds like a plan to me. I'll, I'll, I'll plug you anywhere I can. All right, man. About my money TV. We signing out. You